Coming up on Fulton Today, prosecutors from all over the metro come together to address the issue of human trafficking in our communities. We'll have a report. And would-be home buyers find out what they need to purchase a home? Fulton Today is next. From the Government Center in downtown Atlanta, you're watching Fulton Today with Shania Chavis. Welcome to Fulton. Today, everybody, I'm Shania Chavis. Federal and state prosecutors assemble to deal with a growing challenge in the law enforcement community, human trafficking. Now, human trafficking is the illegal trade of human beings for everything from sexual exploitation to slavery. FGTV's Yvette Jones has our story. Shania, the head of the Fulton County District Attorney's Public Integrity Unit gathered the legal panelists with hopes of starting a conversation about a topic many find difficult to have. This is a crime that knows no boundaries. It does not discriminate. In a room filled with federal and state prosecutors, law enforcement and victim advocates, these mostly North Fulton community members listened intently about the human trafficking issue plaguing the metro area. Generally, people uh, believe that there is a certain type of victim as well as a certain type of predator, and it's not. And the only way that people are going to know what to look for is to have discussions like this. This discussion was spearheaded by the Say So organization, a group of civic-minded women who address a wide range of social issues. On this evening, the topic was human trafficking, and the statistics and stories they heard were alarming. One of my first trafficking cases that I was assigned to was a 14-year-old girl who was being pimped out by her stepfather. Um, he would sell her regularly and he would profit extremely from the sex acts that she was committing. And he actually brought in another female, recruited another female who was already prostituting to come in and teach her the ways of how to, to work the game, how to work the business. I had a 15-year-old girl that uh, lived in Sandy Springs, and a young lady, and I work in South Fulton County, and I, I was assigned to the more or less the Fulton Industrial Corps. And this young lady from Sandy Springs uh, skipped school one day and just rode the motor train with her friends. And she was picked up by a 42-year-old man that had a nice Bonneville with some rims on it and wanted to take her out on a date. She uh, was taught how to stand beside his vehicle, uh, not to take nothing less than $45, and uh, how do they call it turning a date or turning a trick. In a study commissioned by the Youth Spark Agency, the organization once known as the Juvenile Justice Fund, it was revealed that 7,200 men purchase sex from adolescent girls in Georgia each month. State legislators passed House Bill 200 last year to, in part, increase penalties for traffickers in Georgia. If you um, traffic someone through force, fraud, or coercion, um, or that young person is under the age of 14, then you're facing a 15-year statutory mandatory minimum. I'm a survivor of abuse. Laura knows the pain of this topic well. Now she works closely with other victims who arrive at the International mm -hmm. Women's House. It's a long process. It's a painful process. We're there 24-7. We're there 3 in the morning when we hear somebody screaming. We're there to go to the hospital to hold hands. We cry with them because their stories are so incomprehensible. I know this is a hard topic to hear, so I don't want to break your heart. I want to fire you up so that you can get upset and walk out of this door and tell somebody about where you've been tonight. Shania, according to the panel of experts, Atlanta is the number one hub for human trafficking, and the average age of entry into this lifestyle is just 12 years old. Prosecutors say within the first 48 hours, one third of runaway girls encounters a trafficker who then changes their lives forever. In downtown Atlanta, I'm Yvette Jones for FGTV. Thank you very much. Now, women in need of a safe harbor who are victims of human trafficking can call the 24-hour hotline at the International Women's House. That number, 770-413-5557. New families are united in an emotional ceremony at the Fulton County Juvenile Courthouse. It's all a part of National Adoption Day, honoring families who open their homes and hearts to foster care children. This year's theme, Families United, Rooted, and Grounded in Love. 
I knew I was going to work in policy. I knew I was going to work in child welfare. What I didn't know was I was going to eventually be in charge of the adoptions policy for the state and for the unit uh, that helped complete all the adoptions. Um, and had an opportunity to work in policy uh, to change things, to help uh, promote adoption, make it easier for children to get adopted. Uh, and that uh, has brought me here today, uh, where once again, I get to spend uh, my day talking about the thing that has made the greatest difference in my life. And that is the gift of love that was given to me the day that my parents uh, adopted me. Juvenile Court has finalized more than 300 adoptions since the annual ceremony was first started in 2000. Joining us now to talk about the need for creating these permanent homes is Juvenile Court Judge Belinda Edwards. Judge, welcome back to Fulton today. Hi, and thanks for having me. So tell us about the number of families who are adopted this adoption day, and then talk to us about the overall numbers in the foster care system. Approximately over 13,000 children are in foster care today in the state of Georgia. And we typically see the young kids who are being adopted. What about the teens? Uh, are families less likely to adopt teenagers? Talk about that for us. Well, actually that's true. Unfortunately, as children get older, they are less likely to be adopted. And nationwide, over 30,000 children age out of foster care each year. That means that we have failed those children. And it's really important for every child to have a supportive, loving family, a permanent home to call their own. That's why we participate in National Adoption Day to bring awareness to the number of children in foster care that need permanent homes. And Judge, many people may not understand the process of adopting a child. Actually, you need to contact Department of Family and Children's Services. They will assign someone to your home and you have to undergo a background check a drug screen, a home evaluation. You don't have to be rich, you just have to be able to support yourself. And it's not a very simple process, it's not long. If you decide you want to adopt, it may take from three to 10 months from the time you first make contact with the department. Additionally, there are nonprofit and for-profit private agencies that the Department of Family and Children's Services contracts with to identify adoptive families as well. And what would you say to those families who are considering adoption? I would say please step up and make that commitment. Every child deserves an opportunity to have a loving and supportive family. Step out on faith. Your family is large enough to add an additional child or two or possibly three. These are wonderful children that came into care through no fault of their own and they are looking for loving parents. And Judge, tell us about your favorite part of the ceremony. Hearing from Bobby Cagle, hearing from the commissioner who was adopted and given his input about how being adopted has changed his life and affected his life and how his parents were not wealthy, were not educated, but look at the success he has achieved from having loving parents. All right, Juvenile Court Judge Belinda Edwards, thank you so much for your time and for what you do for all of these children. Thanks for having me. Now, if you'd like to learn more about becoming a foster parent or adoption, call 1-877-21-KIDS. That's 1-877-210-5437. Or log on to the state's website. The Atlanta and Fulton County housing market is showing signs of improvement and now may be a good time to buy a home. Cooperative Extension and Credibility, formerly called Consumer Counseling Credit Service, helped first-time home buyers navigate the process during a workshop at the Central Library. The workshop included information on down payment assistance, how to apply for a loan, what you can expect during closing, and the importance of having the home inspected. If you don't have a home and you want to be in the home, we want to make sure you get into the home. But you want to make sure that you are educated when you walk into that home that you understand your personal financial situation, the debt that you're about to take on, and how you can successfully manage that debt, manage your home, keep your home, and then make a profit, prosper from your investment. I'm in the market and buying a home. Um, just a smart thing to do. And um, right now it's the best thing to do because um, the home, the housing market is, um, is a buyer's market. So. Because I'm a first time home buyer, I really didn't even know where to start or how much I should start, what was my goal. So I think it's really good to get an idea about how to even start that. Participants received a HUD approved certificate at the end of the class. 
Fulton County Cooperative Extension Service hosts classes each month ranging from financial management to nutrition. Well, this week, six pieces of county real estate could soon have new owners. Bids are now being accepted for surplus properties throughout the county. Two properties are located in Sandy Springs, one that includes a move-in ready brick building. Two vacant properties totaling more than 16 acres are located on Fairburn Road. A four and a half acres piece of land for residential development is available in Palmetto. And a track of land in Alpharetta could be the perfect site for retail development. We want to be efficient in terms of how we manage tax, taxpayer resources and the county has determined that these properties and facilities are access to the county needs and we want to return these properties back to the community for better use. Now all properties are being sold as is and potential buyers must be represented by a licensed real estate broker or agent. Interested buyers can visit the county's website, download a bid package of instructions and documents to submit the bid. Sales of the properties could generate nearly $2 million for the county. Well, this is the season of giving, and one county employee already did her part by going to jail. As a part of the muscular dystrophy executive lockup, the county's top communications expert was handcuffed and taken away. Bye. Nobody's coming with you? Bye. Erica Davis sat in the makeshift jail to raise bail for children and adults with muscular dystrophy. Just tell him to give. Please tell him to give. Just tell him to give. Give to Muscular Dystrophy Association, please. Please give. We need more money. She stays there until you raise enough. I do. They don't let me out. Erica spent more than three hours in lockup calling on colleagues and friends to help bail her out. Well, her friends came through. She raised more than $1,100 for her release. That's enough to help two people with MD with repairs on their medical equipment for one year. Good job, Erica. Well, now the county begins its own employee charitable contribution campaign called Project Hope. And still to come, a group of elementary school girls get clothed for success. It's all a part of our district by district coverage next. A Fulton County Commissioner welcomes a new class of students for the Youth Leadership Academy for Girls and a group of seniors learn to cook healthy meals just in time for American Diabetes Month. Here's this week's District by District coverage. In District 4, seniors at the Dorothy C. Benson Multipurpose Facility learn how to prepare healthy meals and become educated on the risk of becoming diabetic. The Fulton County Healthy Living Sessions is a series of classes that are held around the county to inform individuals on health topics. This month, the focus is diabetes. Today was on the subject of nutrition, cooking healthy for the holidays, and being mindful of diabetes, how to manage diabetes in relation to the things that you eat. Very beneficial to those who have diabetes or a loved one who may have diabetes, but especially seniors. I learned that you can actually um, enjoy a meal, as Joe has shared with us, is that um, things that I thought couldn't be added into a meal, such as just a little touch of bacon, uh, that it's okay. It was a light um, salad, it was delicious, and uh, it was a blessing. According to the Department of Health and Wellness, people diagnosed with diabetes in Fulton County has increased over the last seven years. County officials created a Diabetes Community Action Coalition group to focus on the problem. The mission is to impact diabetes through creating awareness and targeting at-risk individuals. In District 5, Vice Chair Emma I. Darnell meets with her constituents and county officials to discuss the finances of a key program at the Harriet G. Darnell Senior Multipurpose Facility. The adult daycare program is the first government-operated adult daycare program in the county. It is geared towards assisting older individuals who want to stay in their communities. The seniors may have impairments that are physical or cognitive. We are extremely grateful that we had an opportunity today to speak to the adult daycare program participants uh, and their families so that they would have an opportunity to review the information relating to the plans of the county for this year and for next year. Uh, we are extremely encouraged uh, by their statements, by their questions, and we look forward to working with them 
in the future as we have in the past. A re-emphasis that there's more resources that are needed in order to support adult day program participants with the growing needs of senior adults uh, within the community. There's more and more individuals accessing our programs and today just reaffirmed that there is more resources. The participants are happy uh, with the, the program that's being offered but there's more uh, individuals who are in need of the service. The meeting gave seniors an opportunity to find out what it takes to fund the adult day program which has 33 members. The program provides a social outlet to elders that need supervision during the day. In District 6, Commissioner Joan Garner congratulates an Atlanta teacher for her outstanding service to the community. Angela Washington, an 8th grade language arts teacher at Crawford W. Long Middle School, received a proclamation for her dedication to student development. Angela Washington is a great role model for our young people. You know, teachers are really the lifeline of our communities. They're the ones that we first come in contact with behind our parents. Ms. Robinson cried tears of joy as students and staff expressed their appreciation for her hard work. She has profound knowledge. She's always a team player. After seven years, I still feel like I'm growing as a teacher. There's so much more that I can learn. So. Definitely honored and humbled by the recognition. And it just is a motivator for me to continue to learn and to continue to grow in my profession. According to a recent study by a group of Harvard economists, a good teacher improves a child's test scores in the classroom and their chances to attend college. And finally, in District 7, Commissioner William Bill Edwards inducts another group of stars into the Youth Leadership Academy for Girls. 25 rising third grade girls received jackets as an official symbol to welcome them into the program. The Youth Leadership Academy for Girls was founded by Commissioner Edwards and backed by Fulton County Commissioners. This program uh, has a bunch of the most remarkable young ladies that you ever want to see. Tonight we did the jacket ceremony, which is another step in the Youth Leadership for Girls. Uh, the third graders get their official jackets and become official members of this organization. I am so proud of all the work that the, that the staff has done to ensure that these ladies have a glowing and bright future. The Youth Leadership Academy for Girls is one of two programs born out of the county's Call to Womanhood initiative. The other is Priceless University. This program is designed for older girls. With this week's District by District coverage, I'm Daryl Peake. Thank you very much. Now, you can catch more of your commissioners at work all this week with a rebroadcast of the Board of Commissioners meeting right here on FGTV. And when we come back, breaking down the reasons to kick the habit. Stay with us. Portions of the following segment are part of the Fulton County Common Ground Initiative. Common Ground, the county's comprehensive solution to the problem of health disparities in the community. In this week's Common Ground report, the Great American Smokeout has come and gone, but the chronic lung diseases have been the spotlight of discussions all November. Here now to talk to us about it is Dr. Matthew McKenna. Doctor, welcome back to Fulton today. It's great to be here, Shania. So, Doctor, we're talking about lung cancer and COPD. Let's be clear about these various diseases. What exactly is COPD? COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and it's a type of problem with the lung where the airways uh, are obstructed. The air cannot get out of the lung. Uh, the t two diseases, more specifically, that uh, refer to COPD are emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. And these are diseases that have resulted from changes in the lung, destructive changes that result in this obstruction and inability to move air. And is this preventable and, and how is it treated? Well, the, the most, far and away, the most common cause of COPD is cigarette smoking or smoking of any kind. 80 to 90 percent of cases are caused by smoking. There are a few other conditions uh, genetic conditions and certain chemical disturbances in the body that can lead to this as well as some occupational exposures. But far and away the biggest reason for COPD is cigarette smoking and so getting people to either not start smoking or to stop smoking is the best way to prevent it. It's treated 
by using medications we use a lot for asthma, certain inhalers and things to try to dilate the airways, open those up a little bit. And also, uh, in very severe circumstances, people go into chronic oxygen. Almost all the people you see walking around with oxygen tanks and, and using oxygen are people who have COPD. And I understand from my notes, doctor, that lung cancer is obviously more serious, uh, accounting for 30% of all cancer deaths in the U.S. What are the symptoms and the treatment? Unfortunately, the symptoms for lung cancer are fairly nonspecific, cough, shortness of breath, sometimes pain in the chest that you might have with a, with a regular cold is all it is. Some people in more severe cases will even cough up blood. But, so the symptoms are not specific and almost always occur in, in smokers. The treatments are surgery, radiation, and uh, chemotherapy, like for any other cancer. Unfortunately, even today with a lot of the modern breakthroughs, between 80 and 90 percent of people who contract lung cancer will be dead in two to three years. It's a very serious condition. And obviously getting people to quit smoking is the key to preventing the disease. Uh, what is our Smoke Free Coalition doing to try to help people quit? Our Smoke Free Coalition has worked very hard on a variety of public service announcements and to promote the quit line we have here in Georgia for people who do smoke to be able to access that. The other thing they've been working on is trying to promote smoke-free policies, uh, making areas uh, where smoking is for basically forbidden. This helps people who do smoke not to be cued to continue to smoke and also protects people from secondhand smoke. We've had some great successes with that. We've had some policies passed here within Fulton County uh, around our buildings to limit uh, smoking and recently we just worked with Georgia State University where they've passed a total ban on smoking throughout their entire campus. So that, that group, that coalition is working very well to try to promote a smoke-free environment for Fulton County residents. Always great information. Dr. McKenna, thank you so much for your time. It was great to be here. I was glad to share some, all this information about this important topic. Now to get the help you need to quit smoking, call the Georgia Quit line for free counseling services and referrals. That number is 1 877 270 STOP. That's the 1 877 270 7867. And to join the effort to educate others to quit, call the Smoke Free Coalition of Fulton County at 404 613 1243. And here is news about another lung ailment tuberculosis. Unfortunately, Georgia is one of about 13 states with a higher than average occurrence of the disease. Here at Jefferson Place, where the county provides transitional housing for homeless men, all who are admitted must take a TB test. The primary goal is just to make sure that we're not getting anyone in that is a carrier. We're basically safeguarding our clients. Now, TB is caused by a bacterium. It usually attacks the lungs, but can strike the kidney, spine, or brain, and is spread through the air. Alberto Pickering is looking forward to testing negative when he gets his results. The TB test is for free and it's required for three days so I'll be back here on Thursday and then after that, I'll, after I'm done, then I'll be situated here for about four and a half months. The TB test is offered at Jefferson Place the second Tuesday of the month. Walk-ins are welcome. You can also be tested at the Fulton County Health Centers. The contact information is right there on your screen. And finally, in our Common Ground report, if we can't get you to come to us for health services, then we'll come to you. That's the thinking of the outreach workers who visit beauty and barbershops in the county to raise awareness of sexually transmitted diseases and HIV. They inconspicuously pass out condoms along with the information. We do this once a month. We come out to the different barbershops and drop off condoms and literature and information. We try to target barbershops in several different areas of Fulton County. Um, mainly we, we look for barbershops in um, high mobility areas. It's been a plus for the community because we have a lot of young men in the neighborhood and we try to pass them out to them as well as anybody else, but mostly the young, young men. To schedule outreach workers for your neighborhood business, call the county's Communicable Disease and Prevention Division. That number, 404-613-1469, or call Health Services' main number at 404-612-1211 for information on STD or HIV testing. And still to come on Fulton Today, find out where you can get a jump on some of that Christmas shopping. Stay with us.
watching Fulton Today. Creative minds find a way to cut corners, but not quality this holiday season. Fulton and Atlanta residents are going back to the basics when it comes to making greeting cards. Cardstock, stamps, and scissors are some of the supplies needed to make the personalized holiday greeting cards at the Central Library, materials that can be found at home or a local craft store. In this social media age, creating greeting cards could do more than save money. I think if you started doing it where it was like a family project, we include the kids also so that they can get included, you know, and send that card to Nana or Papa, you know, so get the family involved in doing it. Check out other creative classes at any of the libraries by logging on to AFPLS.org. We'll get ready to cross out some items on that Christmas list. The Southwest Arts Center Book Fair is Saturday, December 8th. Adults and children are invited to browse through genres of books from children's to professional development. Patrons can also participate in activities like the creative writing workshop and even grab a bite to eat from the food truck while doing some holiday shopping. It's great to increase literary, literary awareness and to give books for the holidays. That's another reason why we decided to have it in December. We're so used to electronic gifts, it's nice to actually give a paper gift or actual gift of reading for the holidays for children as well as adults. For more details about the book fair, visit the Arts and Cultures website. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to hear from you about the stories and programs right here on FGTV. Go to our website to take a survey or call us or email us, the number 404-612-8317. The email address is fgtv.feedback at FultonCountyGA.gov. You can also follow us on Twitter.com slash FGTV, friend us on Facebook, and watch us on YouTube. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shawnee Chavis. Thank you for joining us. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.